God's plan did prevail. Oh, he broke the chains of sin and forever set me free by the blood that covered those three old rusty nails that held my sweet Jesus to a tree. Storms of life are tossing me like a sheep on a raging sea, and it seems I'm facing all the demons from hell. I just look up and I claim the victory that was won way back at Calvary by the blood that covered. Those three old rusty nails By the blood that covered Those three old rusty nails The devil was defeated And God's plan did prevail Oh, he broke the chains of sin Forever set me free by the blood that covered those three old rusty nails that held my sweet Jesus to a tree. It was the blood that covered those three old rusty nails. Right, my friends, my friend. Three rusty nails held them to the tree. We had it, it popped off and we popped back on. Uh, might have to put them together for this message, but today, well, I don't give a care what the devil thinks he's going to do, but I know what God's going to do. He's going to talk, be. God's going to toss Satan right into that lake of fire one day, and he'll have his great desires. It doesn't matter what people tear us down or how they speak to us. My friends, you need to get your own house in order before you can take any control of the house of God. See, my friends, if you're deceiving people and you're telling them, do not sin, do not lie, do not cheat, but you're doing it yourself, my friend, why would anybody take a hold of that? See, my friend, you got to walk the walk, you got to talk the talk, you got to be a living testimony that God is true and there is no other way that you can get into heaven. My friend, I'm not mad. I'm just happy with joy today that God has spared me another day to bring up the word to tell you, hey, if you're lost and undone, get over it. Get with Jesus and tell him that what you need. Praise God. See, my friends, so many people want to get on that happy sack. They want to do this. They want to do that. But God has told them, hey, we both to be in the ministries of doing his will, not in our own ministries uh, proclaiming uh Brother Willie's ministry or uh, Pastor uh, Steve's ministry. He says, go out and do whose ministry? Jesus' ministry. See, that's the biggest problem with the world today. They're getting tied up in their own name titles. Oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm puffed up. I, I can do what I want. Let me tell you something. All this flesh, all find the grave one day. See, but my friends, your judgment. Well, glory, judgment will come upon the door on death, my friend. And today we need to understand that God is still here and still doing His will. See, my friends, He ain't up there taking a nap. He's not up there having a vacation. He wants you to call out His name and praise His holy name. Now, the devil, he wants to fight. Let's fight. I'm going to bring the Word of God onto the one that thinks they can do God's business. Let me tell you something. God has it all under control. So, my friend, enjoy this song here, and we're just going to praise and raise our hands and worship God. I hope you're doing that today. Amen? Amen. Helpless man, blind from birth, 
Praise God, praise God. But you know, Brother Steve, you know as well as I do, you got to have that Holy Ghost fire come upon you before you even think about going into the water. See, my friend, we got to be purified with inside and out. My friend, you can go in as a wet, uh, dry center and come out as a wet center. See, my friend, there's got to be a change in your life. you got to do something for God every day. If it's just open the door for an elderly or helping somebody with gas or give somebody uh, a shoulder to cry on. See, my friend, the time is now. We ain't got time to blame uh, uh, set up uh, concerts for churches and have flashing lights and having this and that and the other. I'll tell you what time it is. It's time to get real because righteousness is coming. Praise God. And like over here in um, Psalms uh, 49, uh, 50, my bad, 50, and it says, Thou mighty God, even the Lord has spoken and called to the earth from the rise from the sun of his uh, going down, therefore, Oh, out of Zion, perfection and beauty, and God has, has shined us. See, my friend, he shines upon us to give us love, knowledge, and understanding to tell you that, hey, you don't have to suffer. You don't have to be in the foolish things of this world. You got to lift God up. You can't sit around boo-hooing because somebody's hurt your feelings. Oh, so somebody, he's stopping, he's talking about me. Well, boo-hoo, cry. Cry me a river. See, my friends, our salvation is tested every day. The choices you make in your life, if you hold bitterness or anger or strife or resentment towards your brother or sister, let me tell you something, that will be known in the day of judgment. Amen. See, if you want to get that clear, repent before you perish because Jesus is coming and he's coming back very soon. Now, I don't want to see you go to hell. I don't want you to blame me for not trying my hardest to get you to understand. But I'm telling you something today. If you don't understand God, won't you pray and seek out the true King of kings and lords of lords. So, brothers and sisters, we got our daily bread here today, and I hope you enjoy this. Satan is powerless against the power of Christ. Our daily bread. Today's encouragement from the Our Daily Bread devotional was written by Kayla Ochoa. Kayla writes, From my window I can see a 1,700-meter hill called the Cerro del Borrego, or Hill of the Sheep. In 1862, the French army invaded Mexico. While the enemy camped in the central park of Orizava, the Mexican army established its position at the top of the hill. However, the Mexican general neglected to guard access to the top. While the Mexican troops were sleeping, the French attacked and killed 2,000 of them. This reminds me of another hill, the Mount of Olives, and the garden at its foot, where a group of disciples fell asleep. Jesus rebuked them, saying, Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Kayla continues, How easy it is to sleep or become careless in our Christian walk. Temptation strikes when we are most vulnerable. When we neglect certain areas of our spiritual lives, such as prayer and Bible study, we become drowsy and let our guard down, making us easy targets for our enemy Satan to strike. We need to be alert to the possibilities of an attack and pray to maintain vigilance. If we remain watchful and pray for ourselves and for others, the Spirit will enable us to resist temptation. Today's Our Daily Bread devotional scripture reading is from Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 through 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. 
The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. That's today's scripture reading from Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 through 42. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I know my spirit is willing, but my body is weak. Help me to watch and pray today for myself and for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's encouragement was provided by our Daily Bread Ministries. A sinner now saved, blood washed by a lamb. My brother's a king. The son of I am And sometimes I forget To whom I belong But then the sweet spirit cries My child, I'm still on the throne He's still on the throne So what can be It's well with my soul. It's well with my soul. Let the stormy winds blow. The stormy winds blow. I'm reminded today. Praise God, I'm saved. Salvation, sweet song. While ages roll on, He's still on the I love you, and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. Been praying for you. Been praying for Pastor Steve Bailey and for everybody who's been involved with the House of Prayer uh, radio ministries. I have a piece of paper on my Bible. It says, May God bless, prosper, heal, and help, and I pray for you each day. I wanted to read something here to us called How to Glorify God. How to Glorify God. It says, The steps of a righteous man glorify the Lord as they are ordered by the Lord for generations. He breaks the generations of curses. The Lord will remember his own even to the end of time, and he's worthy of all glory. Glorify the Lord in your activities and in your ways, but how does one do that? Take the good news. Go into the world. First outside your gate, 
and teach, preach the gospel to every creature. Thus you glorify the Lord, so we can glorify the Lord by preaching the gospel to others. Lift up the Lord, lift him up on high, exalt him, raise him to dignity, honor, and happiness. We lift up Jesus today when we exalt his name, his person, and his work, grace, glory, and all that he is, which is endless. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all mankind to me. So if we go out there and just preach Jesus to the world and share our testimonies and testify how Jesus has healed us and helped us, then we lift up God and we lift up Jesus also and we help all mankind be drawn unto Jesus as we share our testimonies and go out there and preach the gospel of Jesus to this lost, dying, and hurting world. It says, worship the Father in spirit and truth, not in, not in word or deed only, for the Father seeks such to worship him, John 4, 23. Acknowledge him in all your ways. We can glorify God by acknowledging him in all of our ways. New age religion can't replace him, and no one can ever explain him away. So give all honor to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit in all things, good or ill, great or small. And then it says, love others. We can glorify God by loving others, especially especially Philip, as loving others will testify to how authentic your faith is. By this shall all, by this you shall know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another, Jesus said. That was John 13, 34 to 35. Jesus gave the commandment. The new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. And by this all, all the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And we can glorify God and Jesus by loving each other, by sharing testimonies with each other, by encouraging each other, by praying for each other, by going out and feeding people and clothing people and helping the fatherless, the orphans and the widows and people in the prisons and hospitals and people in need from the parable of sheep and the goats. As we show the love of Jesus to others and shine his light, Jesus is glorified and God is glorified also. So let's go out there and live for the Lord and show the love of Jesus to others and glorify God in all we do. Amen.
every mile ain't it brother steve that that we carry this journey and carry the word of god to the lost and dying nations the ones that's backslid the ones that's cold on god see my friend that's what we both to do we both be like a raging fire that goes across this united states and around the world to preaching the gospel that somebody that's lost and undone or somebody's been broken down that they can Know that Jesus Christ is still on the right hand of the Father, and He is reaching down and wants to touch you today. Praise God! See, my my friends, my Lord's hands is not short. He's not a midget or a dwarf. He reaches down and touches someone every day, and that's why we get across these airlines and airwaves today to tell you that you're not alone. See, Jesus said, "I would go with you." All the way, all to the ends of the world. See, my friend, when you take your last breath, Jesus is right there, my friend. Today, are you serving God? And if you're not, there's a place called hell is waiting for you. And the fact is that a lot of people rather would go to hell than serve God. And that's a fact. They won't admit it, but it's true. They don't want to get up out of their comfort zone. They don't want to get out of the box. They don't want to do nothing for God except go to church, listen to a few words from the preacher, have a few little songs, and then go home. And then live like a devil the rest of their life. See, my friends, you live like a devil, you'll be with him. That's why we got to be the body of Christ. We got to stand in the battlefield. We got to be suited up and get ready to take the devil on one on one. I take him on every day. He's got a big mouth, but that's all he's got. He just got a big mouth. See, my friends, don't be getting deceived. Don't be caught up in foolish things. It's time to us all get our house in order. So, brothers and sisters, let's let's raise our hands right now to uh, to the Lord and say, Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you, mighty God. As Brother Steve brings the word today, Lord, we ask you, mighty God, that you strengthen the mind, spirit, and Holy Ghost, Lord. We ask you, mighty God, that your power be done in heaven and earth, Lord. Lord, if there be any lost out there that hears the service today, Lord, let them be strengthened by your power, not of the man, but of the word, Lord, of you. You're, you're glorious, Lord. We ask you, mighty God, we lift you up and give you all the praise and glory in the name of jesus christ our heavenly father we pray amen, amen and amen so brothers and sisters we're going to turn it over here to uh, brother steve uh pastor steve the, he's the pastor here at the house of prayer he came, he's faithful every wednesday to come in and uh, bring a word to you up on the uh, speaker.com here for the house of prayer radio ministry so everybody please keep him in prayer as he brings the word the golden mic is yours, my friend. Bless your heart. Amen. Good afternoon, one and all. We had a wonder service out at Old Liberty last night. The up to class night was a great reunion. We're going to the 20th chapter of 2 Kings today. Starting out the first verse. People, this was King Hezekiah. He was laying sick. But uh, the prophet Isaiah come to him with the word of the Lord. Say, set your house in order. People, it's time in this lifetime that we got our, got our houses in order. That's right. Come on. It's time, people, that the churches of God got their houses in order. People, I'll tell you what. He don't want a lukewarm church. He wants one that's on fire. That's right. And it's time, people. We got fired up, started up, and rolling on for God. That's right. Come on. People, I'll tell you what. This king, Hezekiah, he laid in the bed sick. Mm -hmm. When when Isaiah come to give him the word of the Lord, he told him to get his house in order. People, it's time we got our houses in order. It's time we got it swept out. That's right. It's time we got the trash going to where the trash goes. And listen to what saith the Lord this afternoon, people. 
But I'll tell you what, my people, my heart's heavy this afternoon for the lost and dying world. That's right. And I'm going to tell you what, there ain't but one way that they can get right, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, he hung on that old cross. He gave his life's blood for us. People, I'll tell you what, can you picture this in your mind? They were packing that cross up Calvary's hill for us. Right. And they were nailing him to that old cross with three rusty nails. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, every last drop of blood that was shed was shed for me and you. That's right. It was shed for King Hezekiah. People, I'll tell you what, this king called Hezekiah. He was laying in the bed sick. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, the word of the Lord came to him to get his house in order. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember me now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. He wept bitterly, people. I'll tell you what. We read on down that King Hezekiah was healed of his sickness. People, I'll tell you what, the Lord can heal sin sickness as well as he can with physical sickness. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, we've got to get our houses in order. Or we won't be ready to be with him when he comes back. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, in Revelation, the third chapter, that speaks to the church of Laodicea. People will go over there just in a minute. But I'm going to tell you what, it's time that we opened our eyes. It's time that we got ourselves and our houses in order. People, if our house ain't in order and and our lives aren't cleaned up and we go with dirty hands, people will be rejected by God. People, let's go to Revelation 3. People, I'll tell you what. Sometimes it's hard to preach a service when you feel when you feel like that the prayers aren't going out that they should be. That's right. Come on. People, I'll tell you what. This church in the third chapter of the book of Revelations, it was a lukewarm church. But I'm going to tell you what. Start at the 14th verse. And the angel of the church of of the Laodiceans write write these things. Saith, Amen. The faithful and true witness be at the beginning of the creation. Amen. I know thy works, that thou art either hot nor cold, that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy, out of my mouth. That's right. People, that church, it's lukewarm. He's going to spew them out of his mouth. People, I'll tell you what, it's time a church got on fire and got right with God. That's right. And I'll tell you what, people, there'll be a healing there if they'll just get their lives in tune with God this afternoon. Come on. Come on. People, I'll tell you what, well, glory. It's time to tune your life. People, you have to tune a guitar before you can play the thing. That's right. And I'll tell you what, it's time we got our lives tuned up with God. That's right. People, it takes a lot of reading and a lot of study and a lot of prayer to get your life in tune. But get your life in tune with God before it's too late. That's right. This church in Laodicea has fell lukewarm. People, I'll tell you what. And King Hezekiah was told to set his house in order. People, it's time for the lukewarm church to get hot. People, I'll tell you what, I've been around an old stove on a cold morning mm-hmm. when it was red hot. Mm-hmm. People, I'll tell you what, he don't want a church that's lukewarm, he wants it red hot that's for him. Right. People, it's time we listen, and it's time we got down on our knees and got serious with God. That's right. For the time is coming when the word, when he'll... When we come before that great white throne judgment and be separated as the sheep were from the goats, That's right. people of the goats, they went 
Done an everlasting fire, which the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, get on fire for God today. Stay on fire. People, I'll tell you what, the old devil's working this afternoon. That's He's right. trying his best to slow it down. But I want to tell you what, Brother Willie, he ain't big enough to slow it down. That's right. And he can't slow it down. He ain't got nothing but a big mouth. And he's a hot air anyway. Amen. Come on. People, I'll tell you what. As sure as I'm standing here this afternoon, the Lord's coming back for his people. Get your house in order. Get it cleaned out. Get it cleaned up. Get your life cleaned out. Get it cleaned up. It's time, people, that we started walking and talking for the Lord. People, I'll tell you what. Get it in your mind where you can think by it. Get it in your feet where you can walk by it. That's right. Brother Willie, get it in your mouth where you can speak by it. That's right. Come now, I'll tell you what, people. If you'll get it there, if you'll get it in here and you're in your heart, you can speak by it. That's right. Get it in your mouth. You you can let it loose and speak by it. Get it in your heart and mind where you can think of it and think by it. Old Hezekiah, he was healed from his sickness. But I'm going to tell you what. He had to get his house in order before he could get healed. Right. People, I'll tell you what. It's time for that lukewarm church to get on fire. It's time for his preachers to get more on fire. Mm-hmm. People, I'll tell you what. That candle hid under a basket. It can't show light. But if it's outside where the whole world can see it, it'll light up the world. That's what a life for God is supposed to be. It's supposed to light the world up. Show them that there's one out there that cares for them. People, I'll tell you what. We've got one Savior. He says, I'm the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. There's no other one. He's the one and true God. People, I'll tell you what. One day after a while, this whole life ends. He's coming back as a thief in the night. Brother Will, if we know when that thief was coming, we'd be ready. Now I'm going to tell you what, there's some out there that's not ready to meet their God this afternoon. That's right. It's time they got out on their knees and found out what it's all about. That's right. People, I'll oh. tell you what, that church, it has grown lukewarm. It needs to warm up. It needs to fire up. It needs to get hot. That's right. Come on. People, I'll tell you what. I feel good in my soul this afternoon. Amen, come on. People, I'll tell you what. We're serving a risen and alive God. He's not dead. He's alive. People, I'll tell you what. When he arose from that grave, he rose and conquered death. He rose and conquered sin. Sin ain't got no, more, no dominion over you. That's right. Walk there in the light of God this That's afternoon. Right. Come on. Let it happen, people. Get yourselves in order. People, I'll tell you what, I know this is a rough sermon. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what, it's time to get a little rough. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, when the tough, when it gets rough, the rough get going. They get going for God. People, I'll tell you what, our Savior died for us. And he intended us to go out and tell the world about it. People, why are we sitting on the benches of do nothing? It's time to get up off the bench right. and get out there and get the game. That's right. People, God's not playing with us this afternoon. He's wanting us as his children to get out there and tell the world about it. Preach to the world. Go forth into all nations. Preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. People, I'll tell you what. When the Lord called me into the ministry, He didn't tell me, Brother Willie, to sit down. That's right. He told me to go out and tell the lost and dying world that there's one that cares for them. People, I'll tell you what. As this message grows shorter, let me tell you something else. The Lord is coming back one day after a while. And let me ask you a question. Is your house in order? People, it's time we set our house in order. That's right. It's time, people, that we got out on our knees. 
Quit talking about our brother. That doubting him. That's right. Get out on your knees and talk about your brother. Let the Lord take command of it. That's right. Now I'll tell you what. If my brother Tim's listening to the service this afternoon in the hospital, we send a special prayer out for him that he would take a hold of the hand of God and that God would lay his hand on him yeah. and that he would heal him of that pneumonia. People, I'll tell you what, we're serving a healing God this afternoon. Right. He can heal all manner of illness. Sin is an illness. And it can only be healed by the blood. That's right. People, I'll tell you what, may God bless you be my prayer this afternoon. And may the mighty power of God fall on you. Thank you, Lord. That'd be all the Lord to have me to say. May God bless you be my prayer. Brother Steve, uh, before you uh, walk out of that anointing, uh, yes. there's a prayer for a nine-month-old baby. Yes, sir. Uh, that he, uh, a specialist is saying something is wrong with his head fluid and uh, on the brain, and he needs... Uh, Needs uh, some major prayers, and uh, that it looked like that he might have a little brain damage. Uh, so, his brother Urban Taylor had put it on Facebook mm. that um, that this little child needs prayer. So, while you're in that anointing right now, won't you take that prayer to that little child for that little child to the throne room? Kind Father, yet again we come to you, Lord, just to ask for your healing power this afternoon. Father, we ask, Lord, that you just touch this little child, Lord. Bring it, bring forth healing from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet this afternoon, yes, Lord. Lord. Father, just, just bring that, bring that brain aneurysm to an end, Lord. Yes. Just heal him, Lord. Father, we ask, Lord, you touch his parents there to serve with them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, that you help them to know that you're there in their presence, Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, there are many out there that are sick. Father, just touch them this way, Lord. Bring them, Lord, to the, he to the knowledge of your healing power. And Heavenly Father, use this radio ministry to be what you want it to be. Yes, Father, we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, thy only Son. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Brother Willie, I'll tell you what. I'm still fired off this afternoon. People, I'll tell you what. We've got a time. There's a time and a place for everything. And I'm going to tell you what, Brother Willie. Now is a time and place for that child to be healed. That's right. People, there was a woman that was, that was faced with an issue of blood for over 12 years. I'll tell you what. She said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I'd be made whole. People, I'll tell you what, to the parents out there, that dear little child, touch the hem of his garment, and he'll be a child to be made whole That's this right. afternoon. That's right. Praise God. People, I'll tell you what, you that are sick of sin sickness, bring it to the Lord this afternoon. Before it's everlasting, too late. Yes, Lord. Father, I'll tell you what. You're mighty and you're good. Yes, Lord. People, I'll tell you what. We're serving a mighty and good Lord. But I'm going to tell you what. There are some that have walked off on him. That's right. Come on. Brother Willie, I have a next to the youngest brother. That was called to preach one day. But he's walked off and left the Lord. People, I'll tell you what. He healed all manner of sickness. He'll even take that sin sick sinner and heal him and bring him, make him whole. That's right, come on. He made that woman that was sick with the issue of blood whole. And I'll tell you what, he can make you whole. People, those that are lukewarm out there, heed the warning. If you don't get warm, fired up, He's going to spew you from his mouth. May God bless you be my prayer. Praise and Father, God. And please, people, remember, remember me in your prayers. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Steve. What a powerful word about getting the house in order, my friend. See, 
Only way you can get your house in order is you got to clean it up. And I ain't talking about a house you live in. I'm talking about a physical house. But the heart, the temple where God is, my friend. And today, you've had to heard the word. If you got the sin in your life, or you got things that's holding you from serving God, that means you got your house out of disorder. See, my friend, you got to line it up with God. Then you. Then on to your family. See, my friends, let's put God back in to this world. See, the governments today are trying to push God out of this world. See, you can't push God out of something he created. See, he changes the hearts of men and women and children every day, my friend. And you got to understand, like it says over here in Proverbs 13, a wise man's son hears the father's instructions, but a scoffer hears not the rebuke. Amen. A man shall eat good fruit of his mouth. By the soul of a transgressor shall eat violent. See, my friends, we ain't both to go out here and waving our swords and cutting anybody down that doesn't hear the word. But what we both to do is come with peace and love and show them that God is not dead. See, my friends, it's time for us to suit up with the righteousness of God and obey him to the fullest. Now, there's going to be a lot of people in your life say, well, you need to be over here or you need to be over there. I'll tell you one thing you always got to do. Put God first. Go back to your first love. Go back to the one that saved your soul. The one that brought you out of the pits of hell. The one that grabbed a hold of your hand when you cried all night long. And he put his precious grace upon you. Think about that time when you first heard the word of God. And the motion he gave you. And the healing power of his word. See, my friends. This playing church needs to end. We need to become the church. If we're not of the church, being of the church, what are we? Nothing but dirt. But my friends, if you lift Jesus up this very moment, this very hour, and cry out to him, he'll wrap his arms around you, and he'll tell you, my son, I'm well pleased. See, my friends, that's what I want to hear from my Jesus. I don't know about you, Brother Steve. When I stepped inside them gates there, and after all the judgment and everything is done, mm -hmm. that he wraps his arms around me. He says, welcome home, son. Amen. That's what I want to hear. See, my friends, that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> my friend, I ain't, got, I ain't got a nickel in my name right now. But you know, I'm one of the richest men you'll ever Amen. see. Because I got the glory of God in my heart. I got the laughter and joy of my Savior. Amen. And if you want that kind of treasure, my friend, repent and get right with God. The only way you can ever see the Father is through the Son. Amen. See, my friend, it's time to wake up and tell the world that God's not dead. This is yours truly, Evangelist Willie Grizzle from the House of Prayer, saying, keep me in prayer as I pray for you. And remember, keep on walking through that valley. Amen. That mountain is coming. You know, once you get on that mountain, you, you can feel the presence of God. Amen. Get your house in order, folks. See you later. <laughs>